the Legion the Imperialis. <laughs> we have the entire thing all built, plus an extra in the form of these two Sarastas Night Lancers, because I have them. I've had them banging around for ages, so I figured I would throw them into this at the same time. Boy, does it look great, doesn't it? It looks absolutely fantastic. I feel so very mighty being in charge of such an enormous force. Like, it just occupies pretty much all of my table. I mean, there's all this extra space around here that doesn't have anything in it, which I could fill out with the extra infantry that we have, but for the purposes of this now video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting up all of this. Yes. And we're going to be doing all of this in less than 24 hours. So I'm not going to be in one sitting, but I'm going to do this in 24 hours just to see how possible it is to paint up pretty much all of the new releases from the Legions Imperialis. So what we have is we have the main box, which is where we get our Space Marines. So we get one infantry detachment, another infantry detachment. We get the four Dreadnoughts, the three Predators, the two Sakarans. No, those are Sakarans at the back there. That is all the Space Marines that you get in the box, the main box. Then, in addition, we have our box of Rhinos. So there's ten Rhinos there. We have our four Kratos tanks with two just there and two just there. In addition, in the Legion's Imperialis launch box, you get two Warhound Titans that we've done with well, Melter Lances and Ursus Claws. You get the four Ethon Heavy or Light Sentinels. You get this section of Solar Auxilia, this section of Solar Auxilia. You get these two and these two Lehman Russ, this Malkador, and this Malkador, and that's it. But in addition to all of that, we have the two Bane Blades, as well as our two Knights. So, how we're going to be painting this, we're gonna be doing all of the Space Marines as Salamanders. Yep, I've just decided it literally right then. We're going to be doing a Salamander's Legion's Imperialis army just over here. And the Solar Auxilia, I haven't quite decided what they're going to be painted as yet. If there is indeed a Legio, Solar, Legio Auxilia, um, that, uh, or Solar Auxilia, that's what they're actually called. Um, if there is even a name for it, I will look for a really cool scheme that will stand out for these. It might be one of the main ones, but it does have to be a loyalist because these are loyalists as well. Salamanders, hey, yo. <laughs> I might go for the traditional one. We used to see the blue and silver on the old Forge World models. Now, the knights are gonna be painted as House Procon Vi because they are allied to, or the vassals of, my Titans, which are gonna be Legio Solaria. It's in that lovely mottled green that we've already previewed here on the channel on the stream. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. We've got all of this to do. We're going to be doing it in 24 hours. And, well, we're also going to be filming painting tutorials for all of it. Probably the Space Marines bit, the Solar Auxilia, and the Titans, and the Knights. I suspect is what we're going to be doing. Because we won't do, like, how to paint tactical legionaries. Because all of it should be the same, if you see what I mean. So... There we go. It's a lot to get through. It's like 80 plus models and so like 81 models here. Or numbering in the hundreds if you count each miniature as a model. Although I'm veering towards each base and each individual thing counts as one model. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I'm ready to get started. I'm going to kick things off with the Space Marines because that just makes sense to me. And uh, well, in just a minute. We're going to hit the start button on the timer. It's turned off. There we go. So, well, I won't do it right now because I've got to clear this all off my desk. But um, here we go. We've done a fair few salamanders on the channel by now and a couple of different recipes. So the first point of call was to figure out which of these I was going to follow at this scale. Now often what we've done in the past with salamanders is we've done things like 
have Karandras Green go down twice, or we've done Warp Lightning down twice, or we've done Karandras Green followed by Warp Lightning. But at this scale, we don't need to do that because they're so small and they have to just read as salamanders. Now, I wanted them to still have that kind of slightly more jewelly green rather than the kind of more sort of Militarum-esque style that we see on a few Horus Heresy miniatures in recent times. So I was going to go for the Carandras Green because it's a really nice paint and it's perfect for salamanders. But what we weren't going to do was do another layer because we don't want them to go too dark. Because what we have is we have the black details, we have the silver details as well. So they need to be shaded so that they don't appear too flat. So my plan was to do a single green that reads as salamanders green. And then we were going to do the other details and then put a shade over the whole thing. So as you can see, <laughs> it took a little while. I did a time lapse here of painting as many of them as I can whilst answering some emails and watching Stoddy play some Call of Duty zombies, um, which you can see there on the right. Subscribe now. Send him your Twitch primes. Do all of that. I don't know why I'm publicizing Stodd. He doesn't need it. I need it. Anyway, <laughs> we were just firing away through all of the green. So after the green, it was time to move on to the next detail. One of the main reasons for choosing salamanders is black is very much a featured color in the Legion. They have the green armor and the black shoulders and black sh backpacks and all that kind of thing. So Black Legion is a perfect paint for this because again, at this scale, we don't want to have to do too many steps. So doing something like a Basilicon and gray followed by Black Templar or a blue followed by Black Templar or a purple, for example, it's just gonna add a lot of time to painting these things and as you know I've transitioned really to using Black Legion for most things because it's just an absolutely fantastic paint it's very very good at covering and especially very good at covering mistakes because it's very single pigmented very single minded very very good at doing anything really so Black Legion at this scale was the paint I was a hundred percent I was going to use regardless of which Space Marine Legion I ended up doing or indeed Solar Auxilia so we put the Black Legion over the top of things like shoulder pads and weapon casings and banners and stuff like that because, you know, well, and backpacks, of course, and the outside of the cloaks and stuff like that because, again, it is just a really nice contrasting color to that bright green and very, very classic salamanders. It's all part of kind of helping them read very much as salamanders at this scale because they are ever so tiny, teeny tiny men. It was at this stage I was a little bit worried that things were going to be more difficult, but really they weren't. The guns are all kind of held up in front of the bodies. Shoulder pads are easily accessible, as are the backpacks. And the only kind of slightly fiddlier po points are things like the front of this banner that I'm doing now and the backs of any cloaks. But it's no more fiddly than, you know, the slightly more difficult to reach areas on a normal 25 to 32 mil scale model. So. I was pleasantly surprised by this and was able to just kind of fire through these details because we're not doing as much surface area as the salamander's armor, for example. Next up, we needed a third color just to kind of donate the leadership of the Legion. And I went for Blood Angels Red because often we have red scales and things on the cloaks of salamanders. And because we don't have any scales here, we do have things like the little plumes on their helmets and the insides of this cloak. So Blood Angels Red felt like the right choice here because again you don't want it to go too dark using something like Flesh Terror's Red given as my plan was to shade the entire miniature to finish. So if we go too dark it'll end up too dark so we'd have to relayer or do highlights which we don't want to do. Finally for the contrast painting section the only thing left to do is the plasma coil so we just took some frost heart and popped this over the top again nice and bright so that we don't end up too dark when we come to shade the entire miniature. Finally, we come to the metallics. Now this is where the decision making has to be reversed because for contrast paints, you wanna go brighter so that you can shade them. Whereas for metallics, I find that with the new reformulated shades, the brighter the metallic, the harder it is to shade it meaningfully because things like null oil aren't as strong as they used to be so when they run into the recesses they do a really good job but the actual top 
part of those uh, colors doesn't tend to be as dark as you perhaps first intended. So the choice here is go for slightly darker than you would perhaps normally, but not too dark. So for salamanders, you have the things like the gold and the mechanical details, and quite often they're shown as being a little bit more antique. So they're not kind of bright gold like Retributor armor, that's too much. But also it doesn't fit the color profile of what we're gonna be shading later, which is black and green. So I elected to go with Balthazar gold because it can serve as the decoration element, like the kind of trim on shoulder pads and things, but it can also serve as the kind of mechanical element for like engine blocks or whatever, if you want to do that. Finally, we went for some thinned down lead belcher over the top of all of the remaining details. Now, we've talked a little bit about kind of not darkening it down too much and Clearly the obvious choice here normally would be Iron Warriors because it does form such a really good base for any metallic, but we're not intending to highlight these. So Lead Belcher is the next step up and it's a little bit kind of darker than Iron Hand Steel, for example, and it takes to shading really, really well. So Lead Belcher was the choice for me to go over the top of everything else that we had left. And this is going to be gun barrels and uh, sort of the joints on the dreadnought and sword blades and all that kind of thing so this way we get a nice balance between the green the black the gold the red and the silver we've got bright next to dark and we now have a really good profile from which we can now shade things down and finally to finish things off I just went for a shade of null oil all over the top of the miniature because it's a nice kind of neutral shade. And I'll explain what I mean by that in that things like using specific shades for specific metallics and things like that is a luxury that we have on bigger models because we want them to get that exact color profile that we're after. However, at this scale, again, it's not gonna read too differently if we use sort of three or four different shades. It's just going to add work for ourselves that we don't need to, especially when these miniatures are rarely ever going to be examined under a microscope. They're always going to be quite far away and they are very, very small. So Null Oil is a nice neutral shade and it works for all of our colors that we currently have, especially and including things like the Frost Harp. It means we don't have to be careful. It means we can be nice and slapdash, as it were, not that we're going to drown the models in null oil but we can just put this over the top of the green the silver the black the gold the red and the blue and it works for all of them and it gives a different vibe for each of those colors it's not kind of a flat flat color but if we were to use something like agrax earth shade it wouldn't work over the green so we'd have to avoid the green which makes it more difficult on the smaller infantry bottle models and if we went for something like using bale tan green or something over the top of the armor we then have to avoid the rest of it because it would be noticeable even at this scale if you had green on your silver it just would be so we went for non oil over all of it to make life nice and simple all of the men are done so now it comes down to the tanks and five hours and 47 minutes and 29 seconds in to this whole thing. And um, yeah, if we just divide up the Solar Auxilia, the Astartes and the Titans in 24 hours, it's eight hours each. So I've got two hours <laughs> and 13 minutes to do all of these. And I think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna take three or four, possibly even another five. So we'll see. We'll see about that. So, um, yeah, be right back. As past Josh pointed out, we had used five hours, 47 minutes and 29 seconds of our 24 hours to paint all of the infantry. So it was time to move on to the tanks. Now, there was the additional tanks of the four Kratos and the 10 Rhinos. And I decided that at this point, it was time to cut losses and just try and do as much as possible but not obsess over it so I ended up kind of removing five of the rhinos and uh, two of the Kratos but we wanted to get the main contents of the box 
done. So the three predators remained, as did both the Sakarans, but we did want to get those Kratos done as well. Now there are some decisions to be made in terms of how we're going to get these to the same colour profile as what we've got for our infantry, and the infantry are that much smaller than the vehicles. So this is where we're going to move towards our more traditional salamanders recipes that we have on the channel. And as you can see, I'm doing a voiceover here <laughs> for the painting video, and I'm very, very, very passionate, clearly, by waving this Kratos around. But we'll find out what I have to say when we release that video properly, because it's currently muted and you're listening to future Josh. So thanks, past Josh, for all of this. So this is where, as I mentioned, we're going to go to our traditional salamanders recipes, which means it's a slight change in order to have the whole army match to what we've just done. A slight change to what we've just done is what I mean to say. <laughs> we begin once more with Karandra's Green, as that's the base for our salamanders recipe, and it's my favourite, and as mentioned, it is the kind of perfect colour for painting salamanders, and we're going to get that over the top of all of the armor now these are a lot more familiar in terms of painting because they are like painting any other sized miniature because they are quite big as you can see i mean if you know the size of a painting handle then you know how big these are and they do slot into the painting handles quite nicely although you will just have to be careful not to blob it all over the handle like i did on many occasion so that it doesn't get stuck that will add more drying time but we're going to get that over the top of every single vehicle including the Rhinos and Kratos. Now, because of the size of the vehicles, and they are kind of more of a normal-sized miniature, like a normal-sized Space Marine, we do need to bring that green down even further. So this is where we bring in our Warp Lightning, which is what we do on our Salamanders normally, or at least recently, and it's my favorite recipe for painting Salamanders. We apply the Warp Lightning over the top of the entirety of the green, just like we've already done. We want to go for a nice, smooth coat, of course, as we usually do with contrast paint, just sticking to the tip of the brush and gliding across the surface of those models and taking it a section at a time. Now, this might seem that it's going to take a lot longer because we're painting lots and lots of miniatures, so maybe we should speed it up. And because there's so much texture and so many little recesses and things here, there's not large open panels, as it were, like you normally have on a normal-sized miniature, but it is still more effective to go steadily at pace that you're comfortable with when painting with contrast paint as we normally do here on the channel so don't change anything here even though you might want to go a little bit quicker because you're running out of time so just <laughs> take it steady but we are going to add that warp lightning over the top of all of the green with that additional green step done it is now once again time to move on to the next color which is black legion once again so this is where we're going to add that personality of the salamanders, that contrasting color. And that's how we're going to add this over the top of things like doors and hatches and all that kind of stuff. But this is also like a place where you can add unit markings and things like that. You can apply this over the top of casings of weapons like the bolt guns and stuff on the rhinos or the uh, sponson mounted weapons on the kind of more traditional battle tanks and stuff like that. We add this in the gaps over the vents that kind of classic rhino profile and predator profile uh, of, of of battle tank for the adeptus astartes and as you can see here i'm putting this over the top of the large door hatch on top as well you can be a little bit more adventurous here if you want to it's often where you see that third color being used as like long stripes along the vehicles you could use that to denote some squadrons different kind of uh, labeled squadrons for your detachments and stuff like that that's uh, often the way it's done. And of course, there is no kind of set way of doing this for your legions. You could paint entire turrets or you could add in, as mentioned, some kind of more freehandy-esque things here like I'm doing on the Sakara. And as you look on the Forge World website or the Games Workshop website, when you look at things like the Sakarans, they've got this kind of black stripe on the front and on the back and stuff like that. So we were able to do this here on the Sakaran, for example, just there. So it goes diagonally across. It's just basically it's a squadron marking. It's a way to make them look a little bit more kind of uniform within their unit. Uh, and then you can have a lot more variation by just not doing the same thing on all of them. So you could do a big black stripe up the middle of a Sakaran on another pair of them that you might have for your army in case you're going to add multiple Sakarans. There's that kind of thing.
Now that our two main armor colors are on, it's time to add in those little kind of extra fancy details. So things like the frost heart, once again, being used on our plasma array on our Sakara and battle tank. Balthazar gold for all of our kind of coils and engine blocks if we want to do them and things like that. And lead belcher for the dozer blades, the tank tracks and, well, the other mechanical details of our weapons and things like that all over the tanks. You know, the usual suspects. And finally, just like before on the infantry, we're going to shade the entire thing with some null oil and that is going to kind of one block out all of the black details properly and uh, it's going to add that nice shade and depth to all of the silver and all of the balthazar gold it's going to add another little bit of depth to the frost heart on the plasma array and it's just going to unify our tanks with our infantry and it might not make any sense because we've done that extra layer of warp lightning but trust me it does it matches them up nicely because again the size of these you need them to appear darker whereas the smaller things you need them to appear brighter for them to sit alongside each other nicely another thing we are going to do in addition instead of what we did on the infantry is add some agrax earth shade over the tracks just to give them that little bit of wear a little bit of not battle damage i suppose but a little kind of more of a realistic color for the bit that's driving through all the mud we don't want all of our vehicles to appear there fresh off the assembly line even though they are <laughs> literally nine hours 59 minutes and 58 seconds was how long it took for that agrax air shade to go on and dry well not all of it but you know you could get what i mean so there we go and as you might have noticed the butts of some bane blades are just there so we've got the solar auxilia coming up next and i think i'm just going to do them in the box art which apparently is the saturnine rams and when i say box art i mean the if you go on the games workshop website and i'll put a picture of them here this is the latter rifle ter tertio apparently this is the saturnine rams i don't know though but that's what we're going to do for all the infantry so we're just going to go for that traditional look silver and blue what's not to love So Solar Auxilia are up next. We have the two Bane Blades, the two Malkadors, four Lehman Russ, the eight Laz Rifles, four Flamers, four Velatarii, four Charonite Ogrins, four Ethon Heavy Sentinels, and two Command Sections all together. Now, as I figured out very shortly after I pressed start on the timer, for example, one more second, is that the timer only goes up to nine hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds. I should have read the <laughs> instruction manual before I bought it but there we go so I restarted the timer so it might not make a little bit of sense later on when it says that it's seven hours but we are still counting the time it's just I had to restart the timer it didn't like well it, it notified me quite loudly after one second um, that it would happen so it didn't like just kind of lose hours and hours and hours of time but we're gonna tackle these in exactly the same way we're gonna do all of the infantry the sentinels and the Ogrins and things. We're going to do all of that first and then we'll do all of the vehicles. But it looks like there's less than there is of the Astartes. And there technically is because there's less vehicles. There's not 10 Rhinos here, for example. But it's a relatively similar amount of stuff. The Bane Blades are absolutely huge. They dominate the battlefield. In so much orders of magnitude bigger than things like the Kratos. It's actually quite funny. Um, but they look amazing and I love Bane Blades, so I'm really excited to get to them. Now the traditional box art covers for things like the Sentinels and the tanks is that they've got this lovely bluish grey, and there's no better colour for that than Space Wolves Grey, and that's where we started. We started by applying this over the top of all of the Ethon heavy sentinels, because this was forming the kind of test bed for all the tanks just kind of making sure that I'd got that right in my head so this was a risk but we started out on the sentinels with space wolves gray getting that over the top of all of the sort of bluish gray armored carapace stuff next up I picked Asaman blue to be the blue of that particular solar auxilia picture that I showed earlier uh, because it really covers nicely it's a good mid blue which again makes it really good for shading and also it covers really well over metallics and that's going to be important because we don't want to 
kind of make things more difficult for ourselves so we don't want to avoid any sections that are going to be blue on the infantry so we might as well have a blue that covers it really nicely and at the right tone so talisar blue isn't quite right frost heart is definitely not right and ultramarines blue just doesn't have the warmth that i wanted to kind of match over the top of something that's quite as cold as lead belcher which is why we went for Asaman blue because it's really lovely it's just a really nice color and works really well for ultramarines as well <laughs> especially at this scale and then once again because it's already worked on the legions astartes we're going to use lead belcher now we're going to use that over the top of all of the mechanical details on the ethon heavy sentinels we're also going to use that over the top of pretty much all of the remaining details on our charonite ogrins as well and finally we're going to use it over the top of almost the entirety of our infantrymen so we're using it over the top of all of the armor but we're also going to use it over the top of kind of the silver bits of the guns we want and also any sword blades and stuff like that as well as any kind of axe heads or axe blades or all of that good stuff so we're using lead belcher once again because we know it works at this scale we know that shading it looks really really good when you use null oil which is precisely what i intend to use and then once again it's back to Asaman blue and the reason we did it the way we did it as i've already talked about is because we want to have a nice shiny blue on their shoulders but it's not going to read too shiny it's just a little bit shiny especially when we're going to add that shade all over the top of the models just like we did on the salamanders so we use that over the top of the shoulders and various cloaks and the backs of banners and things like that going nice and quickly here because again just like with the space marines applying this over the shoulders is really really quick because they are just these little details at the top of the models so it's not too hard to pick out all of those the, again the only slightly tricky bit is things like the coats and the banners on the command sections but otherwise pretty simple to do and you can get it done in about 10-15 minutes across all of the models Because things were going so well, I did decide to get a little bit fancy with these guys, and I left a blank strip of grey seer down the middle of that flag and the uh, scarf around the neck of the commander. And I was going to block that in with my third kind of spot colour, as you will. So you can see me using it there on the plumes, and that is Yandan yellow. Because as good as Imperial Fist is, we don't want to have to shade it, and we don't want to shade it with null oil because it makes it too dark. So we just ended up going for Yandan yellow because it is more of a contrasty paint because it's a proper classic contrast paint, it's not a single pigment one. And we just applied that over the top of those extra details. It's only on this guy, but um, it looks really effective, especially adding that as a third color because they don't have loads of plumes like the Star Astartes do, they just have it here on the command sections. After the Yand and Yellow, it's time to add some black. This is our really nice kind of contrasting colour, of course, like we did on the Salamanders, and we're going to be applying this over the top of things like boots. Now, this seems like it's a unnecessary step, but it really does add something. I'm not sure why. It just looks really, really, really effective that their boots are made in black. So we're going to go for like the occasional belt as well on the command sections it's really only them that have it because you've got the slung swords but then we're going to also use the black legion over the top of areas such as gun casings and things like that again just like we did with the space marines because well it just adds that really nice spot color against all of that silver as you can see here when we apply it over the top of this little volkite weapon i think it is uh, so we're just going to get that all over the top and this is a little bit of a fiddly stage especially with the boots you don't have to do this i was just being a maverick and i was playing for time i had so much time left um because it was going really really fast and really really well so i ended up doing all of the boots across all of them so you know it's up to you it's your choice you could just do them as silver but it really does elevate them just having those black boots it just provides a real nice contrast at the bottom of their feet because otherwise it's just silver all the way down and you just kind of want to have a little bit of variation on there because there's not too much definition on these guys down there on the feet as it were we now have another color in the form of blood angels red and that then gets applied over the top of the 
large power cables on the flamer section. And that's pretty much it. Which is nice and quick. It's only on the four bases, so barely took any time at all. But it really does just kind of add that little bit of extra pop to these guys. Because I think it looks fantastic. And now for an yet another contrast colour, but this one's acting as a shade as well, in the form of Skeleton Horde. So we're going to apply that over the top of the yellow, just to darken it right down. And as you can see, I was a little bit uncareful on the banner. Uh, but we wanted to get those strings done as well, or well, ropes, as they were. Actually, they're not strings. Um, but you can just mop that up, not a problem, which is what I did, I think, in just a second can't quite remember. I know I definitely did it because it doesn't look like that on the finished one. As you can see, yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to mop that, mop that skeleton horde up. So it is still possible to correct even at this stage, or at this size, I should say. Um, but there you go. And because it had already worked on the salamanders, we were then going to use some Balthazar gold over the top of all of the decorative bits on the individuals. We've got the kind of barrels of weapons, the kind of tops of uh, the ban banners and hilts of swords and all that good stuff. And again, any kind of mechanical details on like the Ethon Heavy Sentinels or the Charonite Ogres. Because it just really, really works. It, it, I liked it how much it looked on the Salamanders. So it made sense to apply it over the top of the Solar Auxilia as well. Just because we're keeping it consistent here. Trying to keep that paint list down for the entire box as well rather than use loads and loads of different metallics. And because we are going to be going for that all over shade, we know how it works, we know how it looks. So Balthazar Gold was absolutely the right choice for me at this point. So it's time to add that all over shade. And the shade is Drakenhof Nightshade because it works really, really similarly to Null Oil. It is that little bit more blue, which means it won't work over things like the Eandon Yellow. So we just want to avoid that but that's the only color we're going to avoid because it does just about work at this scale over the top of the red details that we have but it does work over the top of balthazar gold and it works over the top of the silver of course very naturally as well as over the top of the blue it just gives them all that slightly different tone to the salamanders but it is the same technique we are applying this over the top of the entirety of the models to finish them off I was on a roll, so I didn't film an overview of the infantry, and we just rolled straight into the tanks, and we began with Space Wolves Grey, because we'd already figured out what that colour was going to be from the Ethon Heavy Sentinels. So we just started applying this over the top of all of the armour of all of the tanks, and there is loads and loads of recessed detail here, so you can be a little bit more messy, uh, especially on those kind of down areas of the Bane Blade, which I filmed this entire section on, because it's just such a nice big tank, a really easy way to demonstrate how to paint them. But this was applied over the top of the Malkadors and the Lehman Russ. We just got this over the top of all of the tank's armor. Following up once again with some Asaman Blue, this is where we're going to add that kind of squadron marking type thing. So we're just going to apply this over the top of that little kind of front section of the Bane Blade. You can be as adventurous here as you like. You pick out different panels or whatever just to kind of tie them to different squadrons. If you, Again, if you have multiple of these. But I just went for this little corner section as most of the Forge World box art stuff has just like a couple of colours or just one colour in this little corner of all of their tanks for the Solar Auxilia. After the Asaman Blue was applied, I went ahead and added the Balthazar Gold. And this is one of the kind of fiddly bits, but not really fiddly, but quite involved bits because these tanks have quite a lot of kind of ornate trim on them so we use the Balthazar gold again for any kind of bits we wanted to be a little bit more industrial and also any of the trim sections there wasn't too many industrial bits that I wanted to be different because it's such a dominant color on the trim so we just went for mostly trim there's occasional things like the drums on the back of the Bane blade but otherwise we just took it very steady and went our way around the tanks just like I'm doing here it doesn't take too long if you just got a very kind of methodical approach to it just take it very steadily and you'll eventually get through it again there aren't as many tanks here for the solar auxilia as there were for the Astarte so it can be a little bit more leisurely at this point in terms of the time you're taking to paint your tanks the reason we skipped ahead to doing the Balthazar gold first instead of getting all the contrast colors done is because 
well there is just so much of it you want to get closer to being finished right but we then added some black legion over the top of things like las cannon barrels and uh, various tiny little details like heavy, heavy bolters for example there's not too much black going on here it's just enough to add those little pops of color and interest around the model but again there's not tons and tons here that needs to be done it's more on the bane blade than it is on the others because they don't have as many spots and weapons and things like that but mostly you know just add a few little bits and bobs here and there just to give it a little bit of visual interest and once again for our final base coat we're going to take lead belcher and apply it over the top of all of the remaining details such as gun barrels on the turrets and the the large tracks especially here on the bane blade and various things like the spotlights and stuff like that just coloring anything that hasn't already been done but again this bit's kind of up to taste if you will you could color in a lot of different things here such as any little kind of gizmos and little viewing ports and stuff like that or you could do very little of it and just do like the engine exhaust ports at the back and the turrets and the tracks it's really up to you at this point and so with that lead belcher applied it was of course time to take drakenhof nightshade and apply this over the top of the entirety of the miniature it just works so well over the top of space wolves gray just brings it down just that little bit but adds loads of really lovely shading to the balthazar gold and to the silver as well and the Asaman blue bits as well as kind of just smooths out those black legion areas it just makes them look really kind of antique and impressive the drakenhof nightshade here it's the same thing that the nuln oil did for the salamanders but this time just for the brave men and women of the solar auxilia the solar auxilia are now done after seven hours 58 minutes and 17 18 19 seconds yes we've clawed some time back but is it enough because now we must move on to the warhound titans about what we have painted are both the bane blades all of the tanks the ethon sentinels the charonite ogring all of the infantry, both sets of commanders. So yeah, we're doing well. What was it last time? Nine hours and 59. So call it 10, 18 hours, 18 hours nearly. So I've left myself six hours to paint two Warhound Titans. This might be a problem. <laughs> All the bases to do as well. So probably five hours. Let's see, let's see what happens, eh? Here they are, the Warhound Titans. Clock has been reset to zero. We've got six hours, five hours, however many. We're not getting the nights done as well. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. So here we go then. Warhound Titans, Legio Solaria, let's go. Kicking off the Titans then, rather than doing what we did on stream, which was to figure out the armor color, we're gonna actually go for the exoskeleton the inside the inner workings that kind of thing just to make things a little bit easier on ourselves later on so we don't have to go back and do any corrections because we can just be careful at this point and do the inside bit and that way that bit's done so we can just go for the outside it is the right order in which to do things things of this scale especially things like dreadnoughts and whatnot because these are on a par with those sorts of things and the color we're using is at long last iron warriors because we're a lot bigger now and we want this to be really heavy and mechanical and ancient and kind of very 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 industrial so iron warriors comes into play here as you can see it is that bit darker than lead belcher which is why we didn't use it on the other models because at that scale it would be too too dark so we've got this over the top of all of these bits and the kind of weapon bits and all that kind of thing anywhere that we wanted it to be Kind of less about the trim and decoration and more about the kind of heavy workings of the titans and again this time going a little bit darker than balthazar gold we used some castellax bronze to pick out areas such as those kind of little connectors and any other little bits that we wanted to kind of add a little bit of variation to all that silver just to kind of give it some really nice pop and a bit of kind of visual interest for the eye because you, your eye does eventually get drawn to those inner workings so having a second color on there just really makes them stand out and because it's me and i can't help myself i needed to use some thinned down contrast paint to shade all of that 
industrial metal. So we went for a two to one mix of Lamia Medium and Black Templar, just to give us a really heavy shade that would just sit nicely in all the recesses and pull out all of the kind of edges of the silver and just, you know, make it feel really kind of massive and weighty. Like it's not gonna be bright and shiny. We want this to be proper sort of dark and heavy and imposing, I guess. With those metallics now behind us for now, uh, what I was going to do is move on to the all of the armor. So I used some Gut Ripper Flesh as I did on my live stream when I figured it out on a Reaver Titan. Got this over the top of all of the armor panels we wanted to be green, or at least that mottled green look. And then we went over the top of that with some Pox Walker just to give it that right kind of shade for the base of the stippling which was to come next. Because you don't want to kind of go too bright here, you need to have a little bit of depth in there so that when it comes to doing the stippling, it's nice and bright for what you want it to actually look like at the final result. So next up, we then took some deepkin flesh and some ratty old dry brush. And I think I went through two dry brushes doing this. I've got a bunch of them which are just old and splayed and disgusting. And just started pressing this gently into the model as you can see like I'm doing there. Making this really, really quick to do. Because uh, once you're just waited for those two first two coats to dry, it's really quick to get this all stippled up. So as you can see, in that time, I've just got that entire section done. And then after the deepkin flesh, we added a little bit of a spot highlight to the middle of these sections using some pallid witch flesh just to add a little bit of variation into the stipple. Because uh, this just makes it kind of feel a little bit more like there's light hitting these panels that way. And in order to kind of really accentuate that, we take some Coelia green shade. And then in the recesses of the armor panels, you add just a kind of like a layer all the way around and kind of quite a square boxy motion. So you start kind of around here, add it towards the top like this, just kind of quite quickly going all the way around. And then once you've got all of that Coelia green shade on there, do it panel by panel. So this can take a little bit of time, but not too much. And then with a clean dry brush, you just go in there and just smooth out the transition by dabbing away at it and just moving that paint around like that. Then we moved on to the next color because we've got all of the green now done. And the next color is the red. And that's how we do the rest of the armor panels. And the color I used for that was Baal Red because it is just that lovely flat, smooth red, single pigment contrast paint. You've got to love it. Just goes on. No problem whatsoever. Don't have to worry too much about kind of any dark pools or anything like that. Just throw it on there. Just speed is all the aim of the game here. And it's also quite close to being the correct red that you see on Titans, um, especially on the Imperial Hunters. Uh, so we're just going to get that bar red all over the top. And of course, it wouldn't be a War Hipster video if we didn't use some Retributor armor. Now I did the Retributor armor at this point because we were waiting for the bar red to dry. So rather than wait for that to dry and then uh, kind of shade it down like we were in fully intending to do, I decided to just move on to the next color, which was Retributor armor, because there's only a couple of points at which to use this. And it just made sense in my head because we were playing for time here. We were in a rush. We only had six hours, five hours, four hours, something like that, to get it done. And then in classic fashion, now that the gold is dry, I went and did a shade of a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and Blood Angels red over the top. Because it's my favorite red recipe and I think it just looks really, really good. So just did that over the top of all the red details to get that all finished up. Then there was the trickiest part of this whole endeavor, which was to take some thinned down lead belcher now and apply that over the top of all of the trim. Now I was assured on my live stream that silver is the correct trim for Legio Solaria. And if it isn't, for those of you out there who have a different opinion, do let me know in the comments. For me, it looks like it should be something like brass, but um, lead belcher I was told is the right one. And as far as I can tell, it is supposed to be the right one. So we just went for it. Plus it keeps the paint list down so we don't have to use something like Rune Lord brass. So we just use the lead belcher across all of the trim across the entirety of the Titan. There was no ifs and no buts. And with all the silver trim now done, it was time to take some Agrax Earthshade and use this to do our final base coat over the top of any of the parchment, but also to add our shade and that was over the top of the gold and over the top of the lead belcher we don't need to do it over the top of the mechanical details of the exoskeleton for example because we've already given it that really heavy shading of the black templar so we just went for this over the top of these details just to kind of round out the titan's painting 
and because we finally have a model the right size to do some highlights, but we're keeping things quick, we did a dry brush of Stormhost Silver over the top of all of the inner workings and the trim, just to give it some real nice shine all over the model and it just really might kind of makes it pop and it makes sense to do that on this one because it is a real centerpiece for the entirety of the box so I'm doing that Stormho silver over the top just like we're doing here being careful around all that kind of lovely green but it should be pretty easy to avoid it just because you're looking for the edges of everything you know there's not really too much that goes across the front of the armor panels for example so just kind of have at it and because it would be rude not to do the eye lenses, we did some Dark Angels green going to the inside of those eye lenses, just like this. Just filling out the entirety of that area, which could have left it there because it looks kind of nice and imposing that way. But of course I didn't leave it there. I took a tiny little bit of moot green and added a line going along the bottom edge of the eye lens. So there we have it, the entirety of the Legion's Imperialis box painted. Plus six rhinos, two Kratos, and two Bane Blades. And, well, moment of truth. Four hours, five minutes, and 22 seconds it took to do the two Titans. So we've left ourselves two hours, well, one hour and 55 minutes to get all of the bases done. And uh, that should be pretty easy, right? But yeah, behold. It <laughs> left it to the very last. But we've managed it. My goodness me. Now, whilst I didn't film all of the basing because I was very tired at this point, all I had to do was take a little bit of grace here and just kind of make any corrections to those little areas. We had a little bit of splodging or kind of missed the miniatures themselves. As you can see, it only takes roughly a few seconds to do that. And then I ended up putting Skeleton Horde over the top of the entirety of the base and then finishing off the rims with some Abaddon Black. And then ultimately, I felt very good about myself having done all of this. And I was very pleased that I didn't have as many splodges as I thought I did as I was going through. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it's almost the entire set done. We didn't get the Procon Vi Night Lancers done. There was no chance, given as we only had roughly two hours left. And we didn't manage to finish five of the Rhinos and two of the Kratos. But ultimately, I think doing what we did manage to do in 24 hours is a real achievement. I'm very, very pleased with myself. And, well... <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you what it all looks like with the bases drying. As the bases dry, I am going to take great satisfaction in pressing this button for the last time. There we go. All done. With 49 minutes to spare. <laughs> So all in all then, 23 hours, 7 minutes and 7 seconds to paint the Legion's Imperialis box, 5 Rhinos, 2 Kratos and 2 Bane Blades. But what does it all look like? Well, let's have a look. Yep, we did it. We did everything. Well, we didn't. We didn't manage to do all of the Rhinos and all of the Kratos, and we didn't manage to do House Procon Vi Sarastas Night Lancers, which is a shame because, well, we just flat ran out of time, but it was a good decision to stop painting those Rhinos and Kratos when we did so that we could get the rest of it done because it is absolutely possible to get your entire Legion's Imperialis box painted inside 24 hours, 100%. Whether or not you should do, well, that's up to you. I didn't do this in one sitting, as I've already mentioned. I did this in a couple of sittings, but 
the time limit was very much there and I'm very 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 pleased with the final result and I think they look absolutely spectacular and well I really hope you'll agree and I hope you'll enjoy painting your legions imperialis stuff because I've had a blast. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further, you absolutely can do so by heading to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, just like all of these wonderful amazing people have done. And alternatively, you could become a YouTube channel member by clicking on the join button below, exactly like these fabulous folks have done scrolling up on the screen before you. There are so many of you out there that it really takes my breath away and I cannot thank you enough for everything you do as without you I wouldn't be able to keep making these contrast plus videos. And if you really like this video and you want to send me a little thanks just click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to make sure you stay up to date don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.